It was the most magnificent collection of ice cream flavours in the world. Apart from the snail and broccoli, obviously. Oh, mm, they look delicious, Dad. It's so hard to make a decision. Father peered down at his array of ice creams. Then I will just have to give you one of each. <gasps> okay, said Zoe. But can you leave out the snail and broccoli? Her dad bowed. As you wish, madame. As his daughter giggled, he piled up her comb with flavour after flavour after flavour until it was nearly as tall as she was. And with Armitage in one hand, she balanced the impossibly tall ice cream cone in the other. I can't eat this all on my own, laughed Zoe. She looked up at the tower block and saw Tina looking down at her from the 37th floor window. Tina, come down, shouted Zoe at the very top of her voice. Soon, lots of children were poking their faces out of the windows of their flats, wondering what all of the noise was about. All of you, shouted Zoe up at them. She recognised a few of them, but most of them she didn't know. Some of them she'd never seen before in her life. Even though they were all so closely crammed together in this huge, ugly, leaning building. Come on down, everyone! Help me finish my ice cream! And within seconds, hundreds of kids with dirty but eager little faces were rushing down to the car park to take their turn at having a bite of Zoe's ridiculously tall ice cream. After a few moments, the little girl entrusted the Tower of Ice Cream to Tina, who made sure all the kids received their fair share, especially the tiny ones whose little mouths couldn't reach that high. As the sound of laughter rose and the sun went down, smiling Zoe broke away from the laughing children and sat alone on a nearby wall. She brushed the litter off the wall and brought Armitage up to her face. Then she gave him a tender little kiss on the top of his head. Thank you, she whispered to him. I love you. Armitage tilted his head and looked up at her. And with the sweetest little smile on his face, he said, <coughs> which of course, from rat to English, translates as, Oh, thank you. I love you too. Epilogue. Thank you, Miss Midget. I, I, mean, I mean Midge, Midge, for the beautiful tuba playing, lied Mr Grave. It had been truly awful, like a hippopotamus farting. Miss Midge tottered off the stage at the school talent show, unseen behind the huge heavy instrument. Uh, that way, Miss Midge, that way, called Mr Grave in a concerned voice. Thank you, Headmaster, came a muffled voice just before Miss Midge crashed into the wings. The tuba sounded better hitting the wall than when she played it. I'm all right, called Miss Midge from beneath her ridiculously large tuba. Eh, uh, right, said Mr Grave. Might need the kiss of life, Lo. Mr Grave impossibly went even more pale. Next, he said, ignoring the teacher struggling beneath her ridiculous brass instrument. Please welcome the final act to the stage, Zoe. There was a cough from the side of the stage. <coughs> Mr Grave looked down at his sheet of paper. Oh, oh, sorry, Zoe and Tina. The audience all applauded, applauded and none louder than Dad, who was sitting proudly in the front row. Raj was next to him, also clapping excitedly. Zoe and Tina ran on in matching tracksuits and took a bow. Then Tina lay down on the stage as Zoe set up what looked like little ramps either side that they had made from cereal boxes. Ladies and 
gentlemen, boys and girls, please welcome the amazing Armitage, said the little ginger girl. At that moment, Armitage sped across the stage riding a wide wind-up toy motorbike that Dad had bought from a charity shop and repaired. He was wearing a little tiny crash helmet. The crowd went wild at the sight of him. Uh, apart from Raj, who covered his eyes in fear, he was still scared of rodents. You can do it, Armitage, whispered Zoe. When they practised, he'd sometimes missed the ramp and just drove past it, which didn't make for a very exciting show. Armitage whizzed faster and faster as he reached the ramp. Come on, come on, thought Zoe. The little ramp rat hit the ramp perfectly. Yes, Armitage took off. Armitage flew through the air. Oh no, thought Zoe. He was coming down too soon. He was going to miss the ramp on the other side. Down, down, Armitage fell. Zoe held her breath. And then he landed on Tina's ample tummy and bounced back up in the air. And landed on the ramp on the other side. It was a moment of pure and utter joy. It probably even looked deliberate, <coughs> said Tina. <coughs> said Armitage, bringing his motorbike to a perfect stop. The audience instantly rose to their feet and gave them a standing ovation. <coughs> Hooray! That went on for ages. Even Raj peeked out from behind his eyes. Zoe looked at Armitage, then Tina, then her daddy was clapping like a madman. And she couldn't help but smile. The end. Wow, there we go. We finally finished the story and the ending for me did not disappoint. We've got this poor little girl whose relationship with her dad isn't great. She has an awful life, a horrible life and look how great it's come in the end. The dastardly Bart and Sheila got what they deserved and dad's got his ice cream van and Zoe's got Armitage performing amazing tricks in the school show and and um, really they couldn't have had a happier ending and even Tina's become lovely and nice and they're good friends and Armitage is safe and got a great home. I really enjoyed that story and I hope you all did too. Have a great great week, keep safe, keep busy and join us next week for the start of a new story. Take care. Bye-bye.